this is from the Media Art Council Gallery. And they, they've, um, I was really excited to see how they dealt with other shows um, because I know that ours is, you know, going to be visually incredible and um, wanted to really honor the, the people who did so much work for it. So let's kind of skip down here for a second. Uh, if you recall, um, for this year's member exhibit, a design challenge was issued to the members. Each member was to use a 12 by 12 substrate for their pieces. For some of this, that meant scaling up, working within confines. For others who work three-dimensionally, a switch to exploring wall-oriented pieces. Within the uniformity, individuals are clearly heard and admired for their unique voices. And I think when you see the, the array of pieces here, you'll agree. I mean, and if you've ever been to or been involved with any of the exhibits that we've had, like last year at Perkins, um, you will agree that, the, the, you know, whenever we see a Mosaic Society show up, um, there are so many individual voices and so much innovation that it, it's really exciting and um, it's an exciting group to be around. So what I'd like to do is to you know, go through the show and feature each piece. And if the artist is here, um, I would love it if you would say a few words about, about your piece, either how you, um, how you made it, um, what the imagery means to you, anything like that. Or if you just wanna say hello, and don't want to talk anymore about your piece, that's fine too. So um, Robin Abrams, so this is her, um, it's an image of a koala bear. And I remember in her notes, um, she mentioned that she would donate I, either a high percentage or if not all of the proceeds of the sales of this piece to <coughs> rescue efforts uh, for the koalas in Australia. Because I'm pretty sure she made this, um, you know, in the midst of the other disaster, one of the other many disasters that were going on this damn year, um, uh, you know, the, all the, the fires and such in Australia. So um, it looks to me like it is stained glass and a radiant design, which means that it, you know, comes out from, you know, you see the little, his adorable little uh, muzzle or little nose in the center and everything kind of uh, flows around that. So it, it engages you in a way, like a one point perspective kind of way. Um, and the colors, stained glass sheet being really subtle. Um, it's just a really pretty composition and abstract enough that I think it allows for a little interpretation as well. The next slide, I think, I think this person's here. There, yes. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Um, okay, so this is Susan Allen. This was actually my first time ever working with epoxy, epoxy sculpt. Mm. And um, I had made this in the winter uh, and I loved that it was from a, a photograph. Um, and I, I loved the effect of the snow on each of these branches. And so what I did here was I took epoxy sculpt to make the branches, I rolled it out into little tubes. Mm -hmm. I texturized each tube with a, with a toothpick. My God. And then <laughs> I took three different grades of frit. So I used fine frit for uh, branches that were far away and in the distance, medium frit for something that was a little bit closer up, and then coarse frit for uh, the snow that was reflecting on uh, right underneath the bird's feet. And um, I love the effect and how it yeah. turned out. I'd never done this before uh, and just decided, okay, well, this is a great piece upon which to try something brand new. So um, it's hanging in my living room. I love it there. It's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> So that's my piece. <laughs> so Susan, you use glass, glass for it, correct? Correct. Okay, so like for those of you, like I know I do glass casting, so it's the, it, it would melt if you put it in a kiln. Right. But it definitely has a lot of really beautiful reflective qualities in it. Now you said you mixed it directly with the epoxy sculpt, or did you put it on top? No, so what I did was um, I actually took the epoxy sculpt first and then I rolled it into different sizes of, it almost looked like a tube, like a um, finer, much finer ones for the fine branches and then some thicker ones for the branch beneath his, uh, his feet. 
Um, and then because I wanted the frit to stick on the epoxy sculpt and not fall off, mm -hmm. I wound up taking a dental tool and I poked holes all in it. Okay. On the top of the frit after I, uh, on the top of the epoxy sculpt after I had placed it. And then, um, there, are, there are three or four different colors of frit that are actually mixed in this. And once I had created the mix that I wanted to use of color, then I very carefully uh, sprinkled it over the top of the epo epoxy sculpt and I pushed it into the holes I had made. Gotcha. Gotcha. So that it stayed in there and it wasn't going to fall off, which was my biggest concern. Yeah, yeah. So, and, you know, I wish you guys could see it, um, you know, in uh, up close and personal because the 3D effect is just, it's phenomenal. It's really phenomenal. It looks gorgeous on the wall. So it was a fun thing to do. I'm, I'm very glad I did this project. <laughs> and it's a, it's a beautiful piece. And the whole idea of the mixed media is really, is really effective. Very nice. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I love your pet. You've done a couple of different ones with, with pets in it and it's just obviously to do the to do animals that is a really special thing anyway it, it, gives it, you is. Great spot. it is oh. it is <laughs> all right we're going out we're moving on louise banks is she here um i believe to me and and if anyone has seen this piece in real life it looks to me that the um this is a th very much a three-dimensional flower probably made from stained glass. Veronica, do you, do you know, because was Louise taking a class from you? I couldn't remember. Um, she just maybe doing um, that. She didn't do this in my class. <laughs> okay. It's definitely a three-dimensional, and the frog looks like it's a ceramic frog. Yeah. Yes, or a metal. Maybe it's like a metal. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, a metal yeah. charm or something. Yeah. But it's interesting how it's like this very specific, very symmetrical design that's broken up a little bit with colors impressionistically. And then you have the offset of the frog and the really beautiful um, three-dimensional thing. And I wonder if this is a mirror. That might be a mirror. Yeah, I've only seen these pic these pieces in picture, in, you know, photographs. So I don't know. And um, honestly, the amount, I don't, I mean, at one point I did read all the, <laughs> The things, but I, where they are, they're there, they're in the computer somewhere. They're in there somewhere. But um, yeah, it's a really beautiful piece. And next time we see Louise, we'll have to ask her about it. And I think, okay, this is, um, and yes, we know some of the, there is some misspelling in here. I did check my notes that I sent and it's on their end. So sorry, Alyssa. Um, and actually I see that your title of your piece is misspelled as well. Yeah, that's my other person that lives in this house, and it's okay. It's okay, but anyway, you understand what it means, cycle brain. <laughs> so I got, I got I'm, brain. I'm surrounded by bicycles, whether it's in my house, in the garage, in the living room, in the basement, pretty much everywhere. So it's called inspiration. <laughs> yeah. So I also like to make handmade tiles. So I laid this out um, with raw clay and then as you know I like bright colors so I just worked with that and then I filled in with smaller ceramic tiles. Um, it's not actually symmetrical but um, these are all just like positive words when we're biking and we're you know thinking about what we what we should be doing when we're biking and I'm just yes my inspiration is right here yeah, yeah. But I do bike myself. I just bike for like an hour, an hour and a half, not not 50 to 100 miles. Right. At a so that's pretty much that for the um, for the piece. And this is my next piece called Hope. And as you can see, this was on the opposite side, a little bit more of the cool colors. Mm -hmm. And I used, I had made some, some four by four tiles. Um, the background is actually um, silk screened, um, rice paper that I bought at the ceramic shop in Norristown. So the background is actually birds from rice paper that I rolled out onto uh, white clay. And then I used some lace here for the, the blobs, as Isaiah likes to call it. And the hummingbirds actually was a second run of the rice paper. So I was just playing around to see if I could get two um two pieces out of the rice paper so it's it's faded but i i 
I didn't intend it for be for the, for this piece, but I thought it worked out well. And I had some mesh um, runs of this uh, crushed mirror here in the background that's been sitting around for a long time. So because of COVID, I was just working with what I had in my in my workshop area. And um, I actually was a little bit more balanced with this one. And I like it. So it's a little bit more tranquil than my other piece. Yeah, I mean, the Hamsa, I tend to use a lot. It's a universal symbol. Um, I look at it as, as the hand is like the origin of pretty much everything we do. And it, some people look at it as being religious uh, and cultural, but I think it's a universal symbol. So I think it's, whenever I make them, people are drawn to them and it tends to be a positive symbol that um, we like to hang up in the house. Um, I've made a lot out of clay. This was a Hamza that typically I just make and, and sell or give away as a piece the way it is here. And this is the first time I actually worked around it um, to put it in the 12 by 12. Yeah. Now it's really, and that, yeah, it's really beautiful. And that's one thing I always associate with your work is this incredible positivity. And it's obviously reflective of your personality. So keep mm -hmm. doing it. It's, it's really, we all need that. That's for sure. I try. Thank you. Please do. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, okay. Claire Brill. I don't think I saw her on the list. Is Claire here or uh, Yulia? Would you, would either of you like to to chime in or someone who who would like to? So you know. Uh, I think uh, well, it, it's titled Gust, and uh, don't tell Carol about it. That I Claire about it. That I talk. <laughs> I'm sure she'd be. <laughs> um, well, uh, it, it seems like the gust. So the title and. Um, the image worked together pretty well um, because um, I think it feels like there was a lot of movement happening in uh, on the right hand side and that's where the main action is right so it's the whole thing is just kind of like encroaching onto the left where it's like calmer diagonally laid out background but it just seems like pretty static and there's a gust coming in and just uh, mixes everything up so um, I think she did a pretty good job with that yeah. Uh, and um, I know that Claire uh, worked before in the monochrome tiles. Mm -hmm. so I haven't seen her latest work yet, mm -hmm. but um, it seems like this one she continues working with the monochrome. And I think it's pretty effective because you concentrate on the shapes and you concentrate on the mental. Right. And if you look, I know Claire's doing a lot of work at the mosaic, um, the Chicago mosaic school. And so she's, I don't exactly know what the course of study there is, but I'm going to guess that a big part of it is like learning on Demento. And it's just what I love about this piece, as Julia said, that this background is really kind of stable, but it continues on like inside here. And you, you really have to like look carefully at a piece like this because there's, it's not going to, you know, blow you away with the color, but the design is really like the way she's used the small tiles is really beautiful and effective. Laura, now I see actually it's a, um, uh, anyhow, yeah, I, I see your point that it's a, uh, it's actually, it's, um, it goes through and you can see the background like yeah. in the center as well. And just like it's inside right. of the dust as well. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful little piece. Very pretty piece. Thank you, Yulia. Okay. Robin, is she here? Robin Brownfield? I think so. Um, so Robin has two pieces in here. I believe the next one is hers as well. And um, she seems to be doing a lot with either figures. Um, I know that she was just commissioned by um, the Brianna, what's her last name? Sharon, what's her last, the, the woman? Taylor. 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 Yes, Brianna Taylor. She finished it. It's beautiful. Yeah, she just did a portrait she of finished her. It. Um, it's fantastic. For her mother or father? Like for her mother, the, the like Brianna's mom. And she she's amazing when she does portraits with just little squares. It's yeah. just really ama amazing. Yeah. She really captured it. Yeah. She kind of posted on Facebook, right? For yeah. yeah. Yes. And, but I um, think she makes these birds herself in, uh, you know, she does these yeah. herself. Yeah. yeah, those are ceramic. She's, I've seen a couple of these because her and I, I've been in a few shows together at Alien Arts. And um, 
she often does these birds. I'm not sure if she's doing them like free handed or made from a mold, yeah, popped out of a mold or whatever, but often in these kind of uh, formations. Well, let's see the next one. I think there's some similarities where she's got another bird and then uh, the combination of the, this is probably two by two tiles, uh, commercial tiles with the handmade tiles. So really fun and fanciful. A lot of her work is, um, is animal oriented, but then the show she's in right now at Alien, which we've been in since March, is um, features, I think she has one of Angela Davis um, done in that same manner with the, with the small, you know, the kismet tiles and just really, really like graphic, like uh, color, like not really a lot of graduation of color like we just saw with Claire's, but like a more solid poster type color with the tile. So yeah, really effective. Robin's from New Jersey um, and hope she's doing okay. What's her tonight? Pat Buchanan, is she here? Okay, all right. Um, Veronica, do you want to talk a little bit about this? Because you're well, I can just talk about what I see. What I see <laughs> is a mixture of handmade ceramic. Um, it actually it may be polymer. It's difficult to tell. Um, but it looks like it's been embellished with small pebbles. Um, the background looks like it's a combination of tile and china with the rosettes in the background cut from China. And there's also small beads that look like they've been added yeah. here. Um, the necklace. Ceramic leaves. So this is, this is a, a combination of China, ceramic, mm -hmm. um, and found materials, which is beautiful. I love all the texture that's, have, that's in this. And her use of color is very dramatic. Uh, focusing on the, the yellow as your main focal point and then moving out into more subdued shades that complement and don't overpower the subject matter. Yeah, great. Yeah, thank you. I think the next one, yeah, this is also Pat's. And again, she's using a lot of mixed media. You see some small tiles. It looks like possibly um, the frit that Susan Allen was talking about earlier, this black area might be frit with, with resin. I don't know if any of you utilize casting resin. Um, if you haven't played around with it, do yourself a favor and get a small, like you can buy a kit at Michael's for like 10 bucks or something. And casting resin can be a wonderful binder or surface, um, kind of a surface finish. But when you're using small things like, like a frit or sand, it can bind it in a way that'll make it like, it'll make it look like there's lots of little things, but they'll really be solidly held together. But you can see she's got, um, you know, regular tile, glass, you know, that looks like the, um, uh, you know, three quarter inch tile, ceramic, rocks, stained glass there. So, so it looks like Pat has one of those kind of studios that we all love. And I know I have a whole floor of my that has all that kind of crap in it where there's all sorts of different media and it's just really fun to pull from it and to see what you um what you come up with and here she did a really cute lizard piece just cherry and i um i think this is a little out of focus i remember the the photo she sent me was low resolution so i i think it's probably a little uh tighter when you would see it in um for real life but i believe that these are agate pieces. To me, that's what that looks like. And definitely this one and probably that one. Um, and uh, supported with stain, I'm guessing stained glass and maybe some small tea. Possibly some of this green is small tea. It's a little hard to, again, because it's fuzzy, it's a little hard to tell. But um, for those of you who know Jess's work, this looks like a really different I think it looks like a really different color palette. Like normally she would use um, uh, like kind of a, a, like a duller, like more slate oriented color palette. So it's really beautiful to see this light uh, pastel kind of representation, um, you know, the tropical fruit, so. I also like how uh, abstract it is because you yeah. can't really see the fruit in here. It's just like the, just the feeling of the fruit and the colors uh -huh. and shapes. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead on. Suzanne. Um, so right before the pandemic, I mean, right before, like a couple weeks before, it was very, this is very sad. We, we went up to the Whitney specifically to see the show that they had at the Whitney on craft. 
So they were really trying to elevate craft to fine art to really show that. And we went specifically to see um, an installation that was done a long time ago by Liza Liu. I don't, I don't know if you guys know her. And she, she did this, took her five years to complete this uh, full scale, like five, six foot kitchen in which every, every surface, the, the newspaper, everything is made of beads, is beaded. And um, it's, it's just remarkable and stellar. And it's so sad that like just after it opened, basically it had to close. Yeah. Um, and so while we were at that exhibit, I saw this little tiny, I mean like eight by 10 maybe, um, weaving that uh, was in this, in this show. And I, I just really loved it. And so there I was, you know, COVID hit and I had uh, this marble and uh, gold smalty and decided to just um, make a, a kind of homage to this little weaving. So, so that's that, that's all I have to say yeah. about mine. <laughs> it's beautiful, it's beautiful. Again, it's so, I mean, your work is always so precise and that I think just works towards like the idea of, of uh, you know, to me, this looks more like a, like a painting, like it has more of that aesthetic of a painting. Like it's just, mm -hmm. it's just really rich and beautiful and, and um, very direct. I think that's, I love it. Well, I thanks. Love it. I feel so um, lucky to be in this show with all these incredible artists. So I am very humbled by that. So. Well, we're glad you're here. You're doing a great MC job there, Laura. Yeah, there we go. Well, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. For you. Yeah, usually just like blabbing on is not a problem for me. So you're doing a great job. <laughs> I'm going to shut up if you need to. <laughs> Maureen Grossi um, looks like stained glass. And again, Maureen has done a lot with floral images. And this one I think is really cool because it's got, it really focuses and, and has you focus on that central floral image because the size of the, I believe it's all stained glass, the size of the stained glass is all, is so, is so much smaller and more delicate than the, you know, direct surrounding and then the, the framing, the purple framing. So she's done a really effective way of, of uh, highlighting her subject by just using smaller um, and more varied kinds of tessera. And that's something that, you know, I think some people kind of naturally do that, but once you start really thinking about the technique uh, or the techniques available and inherent in mosaic, you can really um, enrich your work by, by, you know, going towards something like this, by creating a focus, by, you know, pulling the viewer in, um, in an effective way. And again, her color palette's always, always gorgeous and, um, and very subtle and very feminine. It's really, uh, most of the work I've seen of hers is just amazingly gorgeous. And she's a wonderful person. Sorry, she's not here tonight. Yulia. Um, okay, yeah, I'll talk about my work. Uh, this is the Blue Ammonite uh, See the Stars image. It's part of my Unswept Space series that I've been working on. It uh, relates to the mosaic floor, floor Roman floor, that's uh, unswept floor. So yeah. I really like working with the images of space and cosmos. So I decided to develop the whole series that's called Unswept Space. And it's just the objects floating among the stars or uh, objects that have been lost by the astronauts and cosmonauts while they're working in space. So I'm mosaicing those. So this is part of that. Um, it's called Seed the Stars because uh, uh, we sometimes think there is a theory that the life might, might have come from uh, cosmos to Earth uh, with comets and asteroids. So, but what happens if it, you know, somehow ends up, the, the life from Earth ends up in cosmos and it floats around and mm -hmm. seeds it. Uh, so this is what this piece is about. <laughs> oh, now is this, this looks like it's actually, um, uh, an ammonite stone is is that did you start with that mineral yes. like so that? yes oh. i started with the real ammonite uh because uh, ammonites themselves tend to be uh they unfold uh, mm -hmm. spirals so and the spiral is continuous so it unfolds and it keeps on unfolding and growing and growing so you can actually start with any size ammonite and grow it into gigantic shape so oh. this one just happens to be this size 
And um, I transitioned, I had to, uh, you know, they all come in brown color because they're fossilized. So I had to transition it into blues because I really wanted to do a blue m &A. And uh, I mean, I've also made the, the brown one, uh, but this one I had to, um, you know, play with colors a little bit more. So I introduced some purples, introduced some um, uh, kind of like brown purples and pinkish colors and also iridized just to, you know, reflect upon that initial primordial shape that I started with and then unwound the shape. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's, I love how your color works. We're going to move on. Your, I think your, your Venus is next. So that is the same, up from the same series, I'm guessing, yeah? Yes, it's from the same series. So uh, Venus of Willendorf is one of the first objects made, made by the humankind and you know, shape of a woman. And uh, why not, you know? Yeah. Women go to space. Why not? She, she's got to be in space. <laughs> so, and she's floating among the stars. Uh, what I chose for the stars in both of those images is the um, um, rods that I cut up on Hammer and Hardy. It's just okay. easy to cut them up like this. Yeah, it's just faster. For me, preparation of materials I can't last too long because I have to go on with idea. So I just try to find the most efficient way of producing the material and then going on. Yeah, I really love, I love this image. I love how you did that background. It's just, I'm guessing there's a lot of variation in height. No, the... not at all. It's actually pretty not? Oh, yeah. really? I mean, it's like there is a little bit. Uh, so the background, it's not grouted. It's just like a free floating glass. And, and yeah, and she's and got I a helmet. That, yeah, I love that she has her hel uh, that helmet on. Uh, she has to have a helmet. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very, it's beautiful. They're really both, they're just gorgeous. So may I interrupt and just say that Yulia is not mentioning this, but both of these pieces are in a show at the um, Andamento Gallery in Baltimore, and they're beautiful. And what the show, um, can you maybe on our um, private page put the link for that show? Or like so that if people okay. want to go down to Baltimore, like do a road trip, like I'm guessing the gallery has limited hours open. Yeah. It, yeah, the hours are limited and it's very small gallery, yeah. very small. Yeah. So that's why I kind of put in the pieces and we'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. a small, very nice, beautiful space, you know, and we just installed it yesterday, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wednesday, Wednesday. No, there's the installation shots. I don't know if you, if, if, where I, I saw them on Facebook somewhere, but I'm not for, sure through where, but they're beautiful. And you should definitely put them up so that we can see as well. Thank you, Yuya. Let's go on to Carol Hemsley. I know she's here. Hi, everybody. Hey, Carol. Um, this is a piece that I started uh, quite a few years ago in a workshop with Sonia King. And uh, I was, I just started with the blue piece in the upper left and had so much trouble with the tile that I just put it away. It's the, um, what's the, the glass with the, the colored backing? I forget what it's called right now. Um, yeah. crystal, tile, crystal tile. Crystal tile, okay. And I was having a hard time cutting it and everything. And so I just put it away after I was so frustrated by it. But it's, um, it, it's about creatures in the deep. I'm, I'm very interested in the creatures in the ocean and, um, and especially those that live very, very deep and how can they live and things like that. And so these are three samples. Um, I, I did uh, some research and have a whole bunch of pictures of uh, creatures from the deep and these are, these are three of them. So I, I pulled it out and um, finished the little blue blob and then added the other two <laughs> which i don't remember any of the names yeah well <laughs> I, think, I, I think the bottom left is a tree yeah. tree sponge or something okay. but um is that a trilobite baby it could be i don't know i have i have a fossil thing that looks like it could be kind of the body but not this not like the little legs and antlers or whatever yeah yeah um, Carol, what, what were you doing with like the background representation? I think like I love the way you did the, um, the three features, but were you trying to explain like the strata of 
So the, yeah, um, I really just wanted it to look like water and, um, and, and being down deep, you know, it's very, very dark down there. So, you know, you have to add some light. So I was just really lucky to come across this glass. Um, I, I, that's like iridized and it's in some lights, it's like totally black In some lights it's got all these colors in it. So, um, that's the fun part that it really changes from light to light. And it is a smaller piece on um, a 12 by 12. It's like a 10 by 10 piece on a 12. So I mounted it so it could go in the show. There so you go. it's got the- You gotta follow the rules, girl. The you, know, right. you, you know me, I'm a good girl. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, so it does give it a little depth too. Yeah. No, it's, it's a beautiful, I really love it. I love the, the way you model the, the, the different, um, my creatures, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> fossils, but I just think that they're really so sensitively done. It's just lovely. Oh, thank you. This. It's really, it's really been great seeing everyone's pieces. And yeah. What yes. everyone has to say about it. Special yes. opening. Can I throw something out there too? I really okay. like the way she used the grout around that trilobite-ish worm thing. You know, you don't always have to push the background all the way up next to it. I love the way she let it float in that grout circle. Yeah. Or oval. Like right here is where you're talking, correct? No, I'm actually talking about the big one, the orange oh. one. Oh, this is this is grout right here? Yeah. 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 Oh, I thought that that was like matte colored tile or something. I didn't know. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. I mean, I've seen it, so I knew what it was. And, and that's yeah. something I really admired about the piece, the way that she lets that animal float in that grout, I think worked really well. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Okay, is that, I thought I saw Cynthia here. Is she here? I'm here. Yes, hey, she's here. Hey, Cynthia. Um, I think the next two pieces are yours. Yes, I, well, this one is. <laughs> but I, there's one after it as well. Okay, um, so my inspiration for these pieces was uh, using some acrylic paintings that I had done and I like to work well I like to do abstract paintings because it kind of f makes me less tense <laughs> and um, so it was just a, um, a I, I wanted to use a lot of color and get some uh, movement and um, and then just let the viewer sort of see what they wanted to see yeah. and that was my that's my i i like to work that way so i i'm new to this group new to mosaics carol sturton broad is my teacher Aww. and uh so you know it it's um i had fun it was a little bit stressful sometimes because i i think i I was working, you know, all over the piece and had to fit pieces in, and that was a, that was really a pain sometimes. But um, I'm happy with the effect. And uh, anyway, that's it. <laughs> okay, so Cynthia, this is also yours. Yes. Um, so it was the same thing. I, this was the first one I did, and. Uh, I just had a lot of colored glass around and so was interested in uh, trying to make abstract art in glass mosaic. Yeah. Um, so I was really new at all of the, trying to put it all together, which was a challenge. <laughs> But uh, I like working with colors, so. Um, yeah, each of the pieces has a real specific color feeling toward it, which is hard to obtain when you're dealing with materials that have limitations. Mm -hmm. Glass has limitations. So. Right. Beautiful. Yeah. So, Cynthia, I have to say also that you neglected to mention that you also had a background in stained glass. And I think the mm -hmm. idea of you taking that background in stained glass and that background in painting and melding them together to make your mosaics. I really see that here. Mm. And I think it's beautiful. And you made both of these since 
I haven't seen them. They look great. Love yeah. them. Thank you. Oh, do you find that it's easier to work in abstraction <laughs> of this type in stained glass rather than in painting? Uh, well, um, I no, I, I think, well, I think it's more difficult in a rigid, um, because you can't, because you can't blend or, uh, you know, you have to show things differently. You have to use the color and the shape and the repetition, I think, to show things that in painting you could show, I think, more easily. At least I find that. I don't know if everybody, but, uh, yeah, I think it, it's a more rigid, structured thing. And, and sometimes I think going abstract in something rigid is, um, it's, a ch it, it's more of a challenge, I think. I, 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 for me, <laughs> I don't know about for everybody. <laughs> but yeah, but I, I, I have a, the freedom of going abstract is what I like. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I tend to get too too bogged down in the details of reality. So it's more freeing to just, you know, do something where, you know, you have happy accidents and you can kind of move on those and whatever. Great. Now, they're beautiful, Cynthia. Thank you so much and welcome. Um, I've been admiring your work and welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Well, nice to nice to uh, see you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Veronica. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a three dimensional sculpture piece, so the photo makes that it, it's a little difficult to see. But the fish is probably the highest part of the fish. Probably is about two, two and a quarter inches above the background. It's sculpted from um, a high density foam and then covered uh, with multiple layers of thin set in order to create a firm substrate. The back is smalty um, and the fish itself is made from a product that I had never used before called Litovi. Um, Litovi is um, a man-made substance marble dust and, um, and a high fire clay together. Um, and it gives you the advantages of working with marble, but, the, um, <clears throat> but it also has the advantages of working with a matte ceramic tile. Um, it was more difficult to work with than any other material that I've ever used. You have to use a hammer and hardy, which isn't a problem, but it is much harder to cut than any other material that I've used before. Um, and I ended up wasting a lot of product before I was able to get it into the shapes that I was looking for. Um, so I really was trying to focus on keeping that sense of automento going in the three-dimensional shape um, and also doing um, something that, it, as far as automento goes, to set it apart from the background and create a sense of movement and shape, but not have it, um, have the fish be material, have the Litovi on the fish be harmonious with the shape of the sculptural shape and then have the background um, created strictly through the ottomento of the way that the, the small thing moves. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. I love how, I love how you, I mean, obviously the color and the, if we could see it, the dimension would do it, but how the two different aspects really work in tandem, but, but are doing two totally different things. It's really, it's really very beautiful. And that material, I think I've heard. I think I've heard of it. I think Amy has used it before, and I saw her on here earlier. Amy, do you want to chime in about that? Is it called Litovi, Livoti, or something like that? Litovi. Okay. L i t o v i. Yeah. But it's basically it comes like in a 
like a small brick, correct? Like a, yes. Okay. Yes. And you, you have to cut it and you have to do everything with a hammer and hardy. Yeah. Uh, it, it's hard. It's hard to, to use. It's hard to figure it out in the beginning to get it going. Yeah. 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 It's kind of splintery too. Yes, it does. It's because it's so brittle. Um, yeah. I had a lot of waste also in my first time I used it, yeah. but, but I like it. And it's also really nice to mix with stone. It, like, it extends your palate a lot, but you're absolutely right. It is so hard in the beginning. Yeah, so yeah. it's very hard. Yeah, but I, I love it and I will do it again. I am determined yeah. to master it um, because the effect of it is just so gorgeous and it's unlike anything else that's out there. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right, I think, I don't know if you have two. Judy Katz, is Judy Katz here? This is yeah. a- Hi, Judy. Hi. <laughs> this is a, a landscape that I, out of Smalty, and I like to, I, it, I did it from a photograph, and I like to do landscapes, and I do have a, a background in painting, and, and I'm very interested in color and texture, and and I and I and I like to sort of give a little bit of an abstract view to the landscapes that I do, and so that's that's what I did. Yeah. I really like this. I love how you incorporate. I think the colors for me are really what just stands out. Because honestly, is this in why I think I I think I've seen this before. Is this in Wyoming? I think so. I, I, it's actually a photograph that I got out of a, 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 a calendar, so I don't remember, but I think, I think so. It's somewhere out west. It's Devil's, it's Devil's Tower. In yeah. Yeah. Cool. But the colors are gorgeous, and I love how you use the direction of the tile to describe like the lift of the Devil's uh, Peak and the, you know, then the landscape going this way, and then I mean, the sky going this way and the landscape kind of jaggy, like you see those sage bushes kind of rolling down. So I think that's really, it's, you know, it's a simple piece, but it's got so much, so much going on in it. That's really subtle. That's a hard thing to balance. I think you did a beautiful job with it. Thank you. Really beautiful piece. Cool. All right. Thank you, Judy. I think we're going to move on. Sue Kelly, I didn't, I don't think I saw her on here. Sue um, does a lot with, she does a lot with glass casting and specifically with, um, with like found, found glass, like bottles. And um, I know she did, a couple of years ago, she did this workshop where she cut the bottoms off of bottles and, or used them like as, as a, she had a bottle cutter and she used them as rings and then she cast glass and glaze and all kinds of stuff inside them. So often her pieces are like relatively simple, you know, geometric type compositions. But, um, and what you're, what you're not seeing here is the incredible depth that the beauty of the cast glass really um, captures. So if you ever get a chance to see Sue Kelly's work in person, it would be a real treat because she, she really is wonderful with, um, with mixing colors from different ceramic and glass uh, materials into one another, into her pieces, and they're really quite beautiful. I think she shows at that gallery in Maniunk in Roxborough. That's called the Maniunk Art Center or something like that. Okay. I think, I thought I saw Aya here. Am I, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Is it Aya? Or Aya, are you here? No, I thought I saw her earlier. Um, Cause she's a, she's a new member, correct, Veronica? Yes, yes. Um, and um, well, I, I don't really, I mean, just looking at her work, which is amazing. Um, looks like she's playing around with, um, you know, just the idea of different color. I'm, not, I, I'm guessing her cat is not just, <laughs> I'm guessing her cat's not this color, but really incorporating uh, value and shape and um, like so many um, artists that are working with animals do really focusing on the features like in this case the eyes the nose like making sure that the, all the directions and the, the drawing is uh, spot on before you start adding the you know very carefully selected and, and colored and valued um, glass amongst it so um, and I'm not really sure what 
the background is, if that's like a piece of stained glass or if she is incorporating some kind of like paper media. I'm really not sure what it is. I wish she was here. Next time we, next time we see her, we'll have to ask her. Thank you.